A beautiful mom vanishes in Texas. Crystal was missing. Crystal McDowell disappeared hours before a monster named Harvey came to town. She had kind of just uh, dropped off the face of the earth. What happened to the gorgeous realtor in the Houston suburb of Baytown? Like maybe something happened to her while she was showing a house. Did someone kidnap Crystal at an open house? She drives a nice car. Maybe someone tried to carjack her. Was she trying to flee from a natural disaster? Or did Crystal fall prey to a natural born killer? Everybody was a person of interest. Crystal's smile captivated everyone, and no one adores her more than her best friend, Bronze Beckley. You and Crystal McDowell, you were close. You were like sisters. I guess we met when we were about 17. Her spirit was just radiant, and it affected people. It affected strangers. It, it drew you to her. But she gave her heart to the man who would become her husband, Stephen McDowell. Braun says at first it was a match made in heaven, but quickly turned into hell. They got married in April, and by December they were separated. Just within months? Mm -hmm. So the good times, they didn't last? It didn't last, them. yeah. But they reconciled really fast because the baby was born, you know, about a year later. First a boy, then a girl. And we want to give you a big kiss too, ready? One, two, three. Mwah. Mwah. Braun says the initial growing pains of a young marriage melted away. I mean, they had a great life. They took family vacations together, always on Facebook, loving each other, posting that the, how much they loved each other. They were loving, and he was very kind and sweet and loving towards us. And I mean, it just looked like the perfect little family. But a month later, that ring would be off her finger. Crystal and Stephen divorced. Well, what happened? What started to go wrong? I don't know. Whatever reason she decided to divorce Steve, um, I don't know what that reason was, so. She kept her relationship business private? Probably to the public and probably maybe to some of her closest friends because she didn't want us to worry. Crystal's new townhouse was undergoing a remodel, so she remained in the family home with her ex. Braun says Crystal told her it was becoming difficult. She was a little worried. Um, he had gotten a little possessive, maybe, because he probably thought, okay, we are kind of coexisting. Maybe there is hope for reconciliation. And so when the new boyfriend came into the picture, then that hope is gone. The new boyfriend, a well-known jeweler in town, Paul Hargrave. Uh, we met in my store. She came in to have a, a ring remade. You know, it was her grandmother's ring. She was a, a beautiful person inside and out. She's unlike anyone I've ever met. Paul says their relationship heated up quicker than summer in Texas. You love Crystal. We were very close, yeah. So close that Crystal and Paul exchanged adorable love notes on text message. I've seriously never been happier. I love you. Had you talked about marriage? Um, we tentatively talked about a few things, but again, this relationship was, was fairly new. We were talking about possibly our moving in. Um, she didn't want to be by herself. Paul says Crystal didn't want to give her ex too much information because Stephen may not be too happy that they were dating. She didn't want him to know uh, much at all, I guess due to the fact of, of his reaction and um, what he would say or do. He would probably learn about Paul soon enough. Stephen and Crystal were set to go on a cruise with the kids and her uncle. But Paul says at the last minute, Crystal disinvited Stephen and asked him to go on the cruise. But she wanted you to go and brought you a ticket, and then she was going to tell him he wasn't going at all. That's correct. I don't think they were getting along well at that time, and I think she was um, ready to, to get out of the house. Then an unwanted guest crashed into their house, Hurricane Harvey. The storm was approaching. How did she wake up? What did Crystal plan to do? She woke up fairly early that morning. 
she was going to go pick up her kids. And then she had scheduled some sales appointments later that day. Paul's surveillance cameras captured these images of Crystal leaving his house in the morning and getting into her black Mercedes. She left here uh, around 7 in the morning. She probably arrived at Stephen's house 20, 30 minutes later. At 727, Crystal texts Paul, have an amazing day and you are so sweet. He texts back, I love you and I'll always support you. I began to get worried after she didn't start replying back to my text messages. Um, Crystal was known to reply back very quickly. Paul frantically texts that evening, I'm so worried about you. I hope you're okay. He never saw her again. Crystal just flew into the hot, humid air of a hurricane and vanished. Next. See this black Mercedes? Two people got out of it, and it doesn't belong to them. They find Crystal's car, but where is she? How did he do in the polygraph? He, he did fail the polygraph. So he lied. Well, he wasn't forthcoming on all those uh, questions that we had in the initial uh, interviews with him.